nothing in those 40 days. And when they were ended, he was hungry. And the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. And Jesus answered him, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone. And the devil took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time and said to him, To you I will give all this authority and their glory, for it has been delivered to me, and I give it to whom I will. If you then will worship me, it shall all be yours. And Jesus answered him, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. And he took him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, He will give his angels charge of you to guard you. And on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered him, It is, writ it is said, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. And when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. The gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we do give you thanks for the gift of this day, for the gift of being able to freely come here and worship you and give you praise. We thank you for your spirit's work drawing us here. And we pray now that you would open our ears and our hearts to receive that word. And then by the power of your Holy Spirit, give us strength to do it. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Well, what a week, huh? You know, if you were here last weekend, you might remember the mountaintop experience with the transfiguration of Jesus. And then we gathered again on Wednesday to remember the Down Under experience where we were reminded that we are dust and to dust we shall return. And today we encounter a wilderness experience and uh, a few, some of those familiar temptations, you know, were tossed into the mix. But life is like that, eh? Yeah. One moment we're flying high on the mountaintop, having a mountaintop experience, praising Jesus all day long. And the next moment, reality slaps us in the face, reminding us again that we are dust, and to dust we shall return. We spend a lifetime on this pogo stick ride of up and down, ups and downs. Sometimes they're caused by us. Sometimes they're caused by those around us, and sometimes they're just caused by things that are so out of our control. As Forrest Gump would say, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Yeah. Now, we have just uh, left celebrating the epiphany season of Jesus' identity as Savior being revealed. Oh, what joy and happiness and, and good news for us. Yes, this babe born in a stable is truly the king, the savior, the one God had promised. And now we begin our Lenten journey. Our 40 days in the wilderness and we will spend time contemplating the cross with a, a few Lenten disciplines like fasting and prayer, uh, the giving or giving up of something. These disciplines help us keep our focus on the reason for this season, reminding us that our Easter mountaintop joy experience comes to us and for us at a cost. Lent is a time of reflection for self-reflection, but also for Savior reflection. For it is in this season, Jesus' identity continues to be revealed and challenged. Yes, he is the Savior, but now the question is, how will he save? By what means will he do that? To what extent will he do that for us? So today we have the account of Jesus, filled with the Holy Spirit, fresh off of his baptism, and he's led into the wilderness for 40 days, and after those 40 days, he is tempted by the devil. Now, the devil is 
challenging Jesus' relationship with the Father, trying to trick Jesus into compromising, oh, just a little bit, raising doubts about what the Father said to him at his baptism. Oh, this is my son. In him I am well pleased. Now, we know the devil is crafty, right? If there is any sign of weakness, the devil is ready to pounce. He's like an angel on catnip, you know? So the devil gets to work on him. And here comes that first temptation. Oh, Jesus, I know you got to be hungry, boy. I mean, you've been fasting for 40 days. You know, why not change this stone into a little bit of bread and fill up that little belly of yours? And Jesus' response was, man shall not live by bread alone. Now, the, the gospel of Matthew will add, but by every word, man will live. By every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord, by his word, we are sustained. Now, anybody here do, ever do any fasting? And I'm talking about more fasting than between breakfast and lunch or, or lunch and dinner. I mean, it isn't a discipline that we're very fond of. We miss a meal and the pit of our stomach sends this notice up to our brain going, danger, 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 you're withering away. You know? And here's Jesus, filled with the Spirit, in communion with the Father. He knows it is not the bread of this world that saves, but that he is there to become the bread of life. This bread of life is the one who will gather with the very disciples that will betray him. They'll deny even knowing him. And even though he knows this, he will still gather with them around a table and provide for them this last supper. And he will still teach and be present with them. Do this and remember what it is I am about to do for you. This same bread and this same meal is offered to us. Anybody here hungry? And I'm not talking about the kind of hungry that we could fix down in the fellowship hall or, or you know, stopping off at the Golden of Corral, you know. I'm talking about that hunger to be reminded by the Lord in his word that we're loved, that we're forgiven, we're redeemed, oh, and that we're saved. <laughs> Come to this table of mercy. Hold out your hand to receive this bread, the bread in which we find hope and life. Come to me, all that are weary, and I will give you rest. Come and taste and see that the Lord is good. Do this for the remembrance of me. So Jesus overcomes this first temptation. He doesn't use his power in himself, but he will instead offer himself for us all. All right, if we had a scoreboard here, we would say Jesus won, the devil, nada. So then we got this second temptation. Ah, so you want to be king, Jesus. And the devil showed him all the kingdoms of the world. Worship me, Jesus. It'll all be yours. I mean, isn't this pretty? Oh, look over there. Look over there. Isn't this also very nice? You know? Now, um, Jesus' response, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Now, we humans have a little bit of trouble with that whole first commandment thing, and we have for a long time. We like to compartmentalize our lives. God, you just take care of this over here because I got this under control right here. We like to assure ourselves that our way is the best way because, well, quite frankly, it's our way, right? You know? Is it ironic that there's an I in the middle of the word sin? Yeah. We are tempted to think that our lives are only about us and forget that God created, claimed, called, and equipped us to serve him, to glorify him, and be about his kingdom. We seek that kingdom first, and everything else that we need will be given. The kingdoms of this world are passing away, but there's one kingdom that will always remain. That is the kingdom Jesus has his eyes on. 
That is the kingdom he invites us to have our eyes on. That is the kingdom the devil is trying to keep Jesus from establishing and us from entering. (coughs) That kingdom has power and authority and life. And it is a kingdom that we can only enter because of the cross and the sacrifice of Christ. Okay, let's get the scoreboard out. Jesus, two, the devil, nada. Yeah. Finally, we get that third temptation. If you want a religious kingdom, Jesus, I'm your go-to guy. I can help you out. And the devil tries to get Jesus to dive off the temple tower because if you are the son of God, then God will perform this dramatic rescue and the crowds will go wild and cheer you on and, and you'll win, you know? You won't even get hurt. Now, come on, Jesus, just, just give it a try. But now the question would be, hmm, is God here to serve us, or are we here to serve God? For Jesus, he's going to Jerusalem. It is necessary for me to be betrayed, suffer, and die. There, the crowds are going to gather, but they're not going to be cheering him on. They're going to be yelling, crucify him. And he is willing to do that for the same sinners who will be yelling, crucify him. (coughs) Excuse me. God is not our genie in a bottle. He's not our Santa Claus, but he is our father who seeks to be in a relationship with us. To remind us that on the mountaintop, he's there rejoicing with us. In the valley, he is there weeping with us. And in the wilderness, he's calling us. And we have been called to deny ourselves, pick up our cross, and follow him, losing our lives to gain our life. Jesus was about the Father's will. And his identity is revealed through his defeat of all the temptations the devil presented because he is the Christ. He is the Son of God. He is the one that God sent to fulfill the law, to lay victory over the devil and all of his empty promises, to conquer sin and death, (coughs) to heal the sick, to, to give sight to the blind, to raise the dead. And he does all these things so we too might believe that he is the Christ, the the Son of God, our Christ, and our Savior. Today, the devil had a bad day. Because the score now, Jesus, three. The devil, nada. But Satan, oh, he'll be back at that opportune time. And the temptations will continue until Christ, the Lamb of God, has done all things and is on that cross and says, it is finished. And because of that, we sinners who fail to overcome those temptations, we get that gift of eternal life. Now, I I know this sermon is a a heavy sermon, but there is good news in it. There's great, there's awesome news in this word today. For today, Jesus has begun his reign. He has begun the journey for us and for our salvation The devil is challenging Jesus' identity and mission and tempting him to give up the Father's will and to save himself. And while we know the outcome of all this, it doesn't mean that we can or should give up our 40 days of Lent to go straight to that mountaintop experience when we get to yell, He is risen, He is risen indeed. There's a cost to that cross. And we play a role in that. To contemplate the crosses, to also contemplate our calling and our identity as bearers of that cross. Who am I as a child of God? What is God calling me to do? What temptations or distractions are out there, uh, you know, keeping me and preventing me from being that named and claimed child of God that I am? We know the world out there 
is ready to challenge and question us. If you are the son of, or excuse me, if you are a child of God, what excuses get in the way of us serving like he served us, of loving like he loved us, of, of forgiving like he has forgiven us? Now, sadly, I couldn't get to the other lessons today, but they are loaded with God's reminder for us that he is ever-present and forever faithful. He knows how difficult this life will be at times. He knows the temptations we face, the burdens we bear, the wounds we carry, and the hopes and dreams that we have. He knows this week will bring a few mountaintop experiences for some of us. And for others, there may be loss and heartache. He knows some of us in this room are, are wandering in a wilderness right now. But with that, he reminds us that we are not alone. He has given us his son who's been to the mountaintop. He's been down to the grave. He's been in the wilderness and declares everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Now we too can confidently say, yo, you just get behind me, Satan, for I am a named, claimed child of God, and the one who has already conquered you, that's who I belong with. So as the t-shirt at Disney World would say, you know, I'm with him, you know, I am marked with that cross of Christ forever, and sealed with that Holy Spirit. <coughs> I am with the one who has conquered and delivered, and overcome. He is the one we gather and worship today. He is the one that we will serve. He is the one that we have received, and he is the one that we will go out into that world and share, pointing not to ourselves, but to the one who sustains us, redeems us, and saves us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Take a few moments to meditate on the word and the will of God.